16.
Also, Pastor Gromberg is going to be working with Dar and Joanne for the recorded service to have our Vacation Bible School music available to us for worship on Facebook. I think that's all the announcements that I have this morning. I'm so excited to see what this last day is going to look like. So let's take a minute and get together and say hello to everyone. And a special hello to our friends in Leveland and Lubbock and Littlefield and South Lake and Fort Worth and everywhere else. Hi, everybody. Hi. Morning, Emma and Amelia. Sanctuary with Pastor Gromberg. We're here. It's Friday, the concluding day of Vacation Bible School 2020 at Gethsemane Lutheran. And we want to say, on behalf of Ms. Starr, Ms. Joanne, and all of us who are part of this wonderful Vacation Bible School, thank you and to your parents for being with us. And please know that I'm wearing the new Bible School t-shirt, and I'm going to share some of the others with you. But let's first of all remember who we are. We're God's people because God has claimed us and named us. And so let's make the sign of the cross in remembrance of our baptism. Are you ready? Say it with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And so for the fifth day, one, two, three, four, five, let's go ahead. Let's sing This the Light of Mine. This the light of mine. And we have 
some other items on the, on the altar to help us with the story. And Miss Alice is going to share those with you during her story time. But we have a rock and we have a sand. And we have both of those in the ocean. We have it all around. On the beach. But we're going to learn what is the solid foundation. And you start helping now because you always are willing to help the pastor. What are the things, the words we've added to our vocabulary? We met that Padre that first day, Padre the Seahorse, and he taught us about caring. Yes. God's people care. Mm -hmm. And then that second day, we had another important word. Remember that, Naaman? Oh, I almost forgot. I've got to do this quickly because I don't want to take Alice's story time away. But <laughs> thank you. Thank you all for these wonderful t-shirts on Monday. On Tuesday, we learned about Naaman, and he was helped. And that's a great Bible story, by the way. And then we learned on the third day that God's people... Let me see what we learned about on the third day. The third? Trust. I think it was about trusting God. Oh, thanks. I knew you were helping, Miss Joanne. Thank you. We learned to trust. So we care, help, trust. And on the fourth day, we learned to... Remember that blind man? Yeah. Blind man, what did he do? He, he believed. That's a word. We are believers. We're not ashamed about being believers. And I wore this on Thursday and now today on Friday. We learn once again the importance of listening. Who's our friend who's going to help us? What's his name? Rocky. Rocky the rock crab. He's a rock crab. He likes to hide into the uh -huh. coral reef. Okay. The reef wears our refuge and strength. I bet you've had a marvelous time in Bible school this week. I tell you. Thank you. I was so worried that we weren't going to have it because all the years pastor's been here, for 48 years we've had Bible school. Bible school is so important to me when I was a boy, and I'm glad it's important to you. To your parents, to the family members, to children and grandchildren, we love you all. And thanks to everyone who's made this possible, to Ashland Alls House, to everyone who's been a part of this, we say thanks to you. And blessed, blessed day. As you listen, and as you believe, and as you trust, and as you help, and as you care. I went backwards from Friday to Monday. I wonder. You did a good can you, job. Thank you, Miss Dar. <laughs> I wonder, can you remember those words? Next time I see you, next time you see Miss Dar, tell us those important five words. We learned this week in Vacation Bible School, we love you. Blessings to you and to your family. Next, we're going to go to story time with Miss Alice. Oh, I love playing with sand. It's so hot out here, but sand is so fun to play with. Oh, hi there. How are y'all doing today? Well, welcome to our last day of vacation Bible school. I was just doing a little sandcastle building. I hope you have all been having a great time in God's Bible, Great Bible Reef this week. Let's go ahead and open our story time with our prayer. Everyone do it with me. Dear God, you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Amen. Awesome job. Okay, let's talk about everything we've covered so far this week. So on Monday, this is Padre the Seahorse. Padre talked to us about how God's people care for each other. And then on Tuesday, we had Flip, Flip the Dolphin, and Flip talked to us about how God's people help each other. And on Wednesday, we had Miss Bella the butterfly fish, and she talked to us about how God's people trust. And then yesterday, on Thursday, we had Heidi the octopus, and Heidi talked to us about how God's people believe. Thanks, Heidi. 
Okay, so our last character of the week is this guy. This is Rocky the Crab. And our story today is about making homes in the sand, on the sand and making homes on a rock. And Rocky the Crab can make his home either in sand, some crabs make their homes in sand, or in the rocks of the coral reef. So Rocky is a good character for our story today because he talks, he uh, builds his house in both of those different kinds of places. That's the story we're gonna talk about today. So thanks Rocky, you can hang out here and see how well I do building houses. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right into our story. I've got my storybook Bible here and I'm gonna read from it, but I also have some props down here on the ground that you guys can look at that's gonna help me tell my story. So, the story that we have today is a very special kind of story because it's a story that Jesus told to people while he was alive. And those stories were called parables. And a parable is a sort of a story that helps you to learn things about how to live your life. So through parables, people could learn that God would help them, especially when things were not easy in their, in their lives. So Jesus told this parable about two different people that were building houses. The first person built their house on top of sand. So, let's make sure I get to the right person. So, the first person built their house on sand. Let's see how it goes to build a house on sand. Let me try here. Oh my goodness. Here I go. Okay, so. His house was able to be built nice and fast. It was easy to build and it, it was brought up real fast. But then the storms came and they shook the little house. Oh, crash! And it fell. And then he didn't have a house anymore. Now let's talk about the second person. They chose to build their house on a solid rock. See how well I can do with my rock. Now, it's a lot harder to build on rock. You have to make sure it's level and flat. You gotta make sure that you keep it as sturdy as you can. It might take a little bit longer to build a house on a rock. But let's see what happens, what happens when the storms come. <gasps> that house stood firm. So the house on the rock didn't fall down whenever the storms came. So then Jesus said, let's look at these two people and let's think about this. If you listen to me, you are building your life on the sturdy rock of God. But if you don't listen to me, you are building your life on ideas that are like the sand that shifts and blows away with the wind and the storms. And when Jesus finished talking, the people were surprised by his words. They had never heard stories like that from their rabbis before. Jesus was a wonderful teacher and helped them learn how to always trust God. The end. Okay, let's take a look at our, our two houses here while we ponder some things. So in this story, we're talking about building a strong foundation for the future. So the foolish builder was building a house that looked sturdy at first, but it didn't have a strong foundation. So when the storms came, it fell over. But the wise builder fought ahead about the coming storms and built his house on a nice, strong, solid foundation. And listening to Jesus' words gives us that nice, strong foundation so that when things happen in our lives that are hard to deal with, like the times we're living in right now, we have a nice, strong foundation. 
and we can and we can be safe and know that we can trust that God is taking care of us. All right, let's think about this. I wonder, I wonder what the first builder thought when his house came down with a crash. I wonder why building a house on a rock worked so much better. And I wonder in thinking about listening to Jesus tell his parables, I wonder what that would have been like to sit there and hear Jesus talk and tell stories. And I wonder if this story that Jesus told can have applications for me in my life. I wonder if this story is for me too. Okay, so when we listen to God and we um, believe in him, then that is how we can feel safe in our lives and have a strong foundation. So we want to listen. All right, so when we listen to God, ways we can do that, we can read Bible stories. We can talk with other people about God, just like we're doing right here. Just like maybe you can talk with your family later today about God's word and the stories that you've heard at Vacation Bible School this week and listen to what God is telling us for our lives. All right, that's all for our story for today. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, we will listen to your voice today. Teach us to live our lives the way you taught us. Amen. All right, that's all I have for this week. I had so much fun doing stories with you. Have a wonderful rest of your summer. Goodbye. Next, we're going to be going to music with Ms. Dar and Ms. Jerry. going to have a special little poem for us to lead us into diving into the great Bible reef song. All right, Miss Joanne? Today, and you'll have to zoom it in to see the pictures of our reef, but it says, there's a curious commotion at the bottom of the sea. I think we ought to go and take a look. You'll find every sort of creature living beneath the sea and swimming through the pages of the great big Bible book. Thank you, Miss Joanne. Hit it!
wonderful job. All right, let's see how we do on our Bible memory verse song. We should have this mm. down well, shouldn't we? Yeah. We should. All right, here we go. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2. Again, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2. You got it. Oh, uh, up again. That's you gotta do another elbow bump. Oh. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Bubble, bumps. <laughs> Elbow, bump. Okay, I got it. All right, here we go. Now, our day five, day five Bible story song, as you have heard, was about a wise man and maybe a foolish man building their house upon a rock. So our song is going to be about building a little bit, but they learned to listen. Listen to what God was telling them. And our friend, Rocky the Crab right here, who's been hanging out a week, mm -hmm. is, has helped us along our journey today in learning about God's people listen. So here are some new movements and some signs. Okay, first of all, we're just gonna go, hey, that's pretty easy, the fist goes up, yeah. Can you hear the voice of Jesus calling, all right? Looking for disciples who can follow him. Got your walking fingers like that, okay? Then we go, hey, can you hear the voice of Jesus calling? Could be just a whisper. So you have your finger in front of your mouth like you're whispering. Could be just a whisper or a mighty wind. Then it goes, get out your Bibles. So remember our Bible is the book. So we're getting it out. Get out your Bible. Get out your friends. You're welcoming them in. Let's hear about the kind of love that never, never ends. So it's never, never, and then we're looking way off because it never ends, okay? And then we go all out of listen up, and we point our hand up. When Jesus calls, listen up. When Jesus calls, listen up. When Jesus calls out your name. Can you put two fingers? You got two fingers and they're not spread out. They're close together. So you're gonna tap each other. This is like my name, name, all right? Okay, we're going to, and, and you're never gonna be the same. So when we get to that line and Jesus called, you'll never be the same. It's like, mm -mm, nope, not gonna be the same. All right, so let's try it together, shall we?
forgot to tell you that we're only singing verse one on that song, but maybe you figured that out. We're just singing verse one today and uh, learning that well. Okay, we have one more song to wrap up our week of Vacation Bible School together. It's our dive deep song. Remember how we're building all the verses on top of each other? So today is day five, God's people listen, all right? So like the builders, just pretend you have a hammer and you're hammering. Like the builders on a solid rock, we're learning to, uh, we're building. We're building, yeah. Learning how God's people listen, we're building on God's word, okay? So uh, then we, what's the next verse? Do you remember what we did yesterday? It's the blind man bathing in the pool. And then it's Peter fishing in the boat. Then it's Naaman searching for a cure. And Moses floating on the water. All right, let's see if we can get through this all together. Here we go. this week at VBS, as I'm sure that you have. So share it with others, right? Okay. Thanks so much. Love you all. Bye. Bye. Next, we're going to be going to crafts with Mrs. Gromberg. Miriam and Elise.
Welcome to day five of Vacation Bible School Crafts. We are working on crabs today, but before we do that, I wanted you to see the t-shirt that I'm wearing. The t-shirt is Gethsemane Standing Strong. And I thought that was kind of an, an appropriate one because we're going to school in different ways, we're worshiping in different ways, there are things we can't do that we really want to do, there are things we have to do that we don't want to do, and sometimes it just gets to be a little overwhelming. So, with this one, it's Semini standing strong, and if you're standing strong, we're all going to enjoy and get through all of this the way we should. I'm standing strong. Good, I'm glad you're standing strong. I'm standing so strong. So, we're going to work on crabs today, and then, Elise, if you will show yes. us the crab picture. Yes. So here are the crabs. These are, they're this, jolly crabs. Yeah, they're happy crabs. This is Rocky the crab. Um, Miriam's going to tell us the story about why we're looking at these kind of crabs. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks about building on the sand or on the rock. Building on the sand is precarious because when it rains, the sand shift and the buildings are often washed away. While building on the rock provides a firm foundation and buildings usually survive. Jesus gives us the firm foundation for our lives. So tell us about Rocky the Crab. I will. Rocky the Crab. Crabs are like the men in the story. Some live in sand so that their homes will start shifting away with the sand. While other crabs live on rocks, shorelines, on rocky shorelines, where their homes remain firm. So we're going to make a picture of crabs. And if you pick up the picture and look at it, you can see that that's made out of blue uh, paper which represents the ocean and then there's um, brown and that's the brown paper bag that you can use to cut up and that represents the sand and the rocks so we're going to put it together the first thing that elise is going to do is to make some waves with the white with the white crayons to make it look like we're in water and Miriam is going to cut out the rock the sand for us so to do the sand, um, I drew a line with pencil where I want the sand to be, and I will be cutting along that line. And if you notice, <clears throat> that paper bag fits perfectly on the blue paper so that it will fit once it's cut out. And to do the waves, you just draw like little waves. You just w's. do it, wavy waves. She's going to and press hard so that we can see them. There you go. Lots of waves. Looking good. I'm cutting away this extra bag first because it's just a lot. So she's going to... I don't know how far down this comes. Well, you can make them far down as you want to, and some of it will just cover yeah. it up. There's lots of waves because you know that an ocean can be pretty wavy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're big, sometimes they're little. I'm a golf surfer. There's a lot of extra paper. Yes, there is. But it's a good use for a bag if you've used it for other things. You can reuse it again and make a, some sand out of it. So now we have sand, and if you put glue on the back side of that, then we can glue it down to the uh, blue ocean, and we will have the sand. Well, Elise is doing that. Mary is going to tell us how to make the crabs. It just grab it all over, all over. So to make the crab, you're going to want to use a red cupcake liner. I folded my cupcake liner in half. It makes it easier to know where to cut. And then you're just going to take your scissors and cut straight along that cupcake, that um, crease. And now you have two um, half circles that you can use for crabs. And then as soon as the sand is glued down, we're going to glue these on there. Uh, the next step for the crabs 
is you're going to want to make their like snap like little things. Um, and again, I'm going to fold it in half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a longer crease and I'm going to cut two. And then I'll have another one of these and I'll cut it two more. So now, turn it around at least so we can see. Looks like the there beach. There we have a beach. Well, it's not actually a beach. It's the sand underneath the water. And we have our water up ahead. So now we'll be ready to uh, glue on our crabs. But if we take one more look at it, Elise, if you would turn it. So some of the crabs are going to live down at the bottom down here. And one of the crabs is going to live up here because some live on rocks and some live on the sand. Yeah. So, Elise, if you want to paste, put your crab on. Okay. Just gonna get the back of this. Look at that. There you go, show them how it looks. I have one there's body for a crab down so there's far. There's one crab ready to be finished. We can put this one also as well. Okay, and we'll put on the second one. And that one's going to live at the bottom mm -hmm. in the sand. So that is how it's supposed to wet. That's right. And now, Miriam has cut out claws for the crabs, so you want to put the claws, the claws on and then you can draw your, once you get them on where you want them, then you can draw the, 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 the I guess, I don't know, what are they, legs or whatever it is that are attached to them? Yeah. And then this, this glue stick is on instead. So right now we have our cupcake liners glued and our claws glued. And, and now we're going to draw lines that I'll attach these to the cupcake, to the claws. So he's gonna have a little guy here, there, Miriam. And then crabs also have six other legs, three on each side, so we can use the same and draw some legs to represent the other ones that the crab has. And crabs have googly eyes. There we go. Look at that. There's our crabs. Wonderful. They have googly eyes, two together. So next thing is to put on your eyes. One there and one there. So now my crab can see me. And now they look like they really uh -oh. are alive, don't they? Yep. This is really cute. See what it looks like now. Show everybody what it looks like. It's pretty close to the final product. And so then, if you want to add some little sequins shiny to the to the sand, it'll look like there are some rocks. And if you just take the what I think the easiest thing to do is just put the, the paste right on the paper and then put the rock on top of it. Okay. And it'll all just dry. Yeah, yeah mine is kind of out. Just put a bunch of the. Rocky sand. Put them on top. Uh -oh. Yeah, it's kind of hard on your fingers. It's a little you have bit to... sticky. Yeah, sticky, sticky. That is too big. So I want to put this flower. And even though it has purple marker, that marker is going to dry as you yeah. know, and you won't see it after that. Yeah, it's purple. Yeah, disappearing glue. Why don't you yes. put a little bit over there? And... 
it stuck to my finger. Yeah. <laughs> finger. Finger. It will stick to your fingers. Uh oh. I think my. I think. I think. I don't even know what to say. It's very sticky. It'll look good. Alright, we're just about done and out of time, so let's get a little bit more sand and sparkles on it. And... Alright, All right. let's show everybody what we've done. Okay. And there's our crabs. Some crabs live on the bottom in the sand, some live up on the rocks. Thank you for joining us, and we're so glad you've been part of Bible School, and enjoy your crabs. Bye-bye. Bye! -bye. Bye. <laughs>
we'll give her a minute to wash her hands. Okay, sorry. For this snack, you're going to need an apple, some mini chocolate chips, a sharp knife, a cutting board, and a plastic knife if you want to use it. For some parts of this snack, you're probably going to need to have your parents do it for you. So the first step is to cut a chunk of half of the apple in half, but not quite, so a little off from the stem. This is going to be the body of our crab. Then you're going to take your knife and you're going to cut the rest of the way around the stem. You're then going to cut these pieces of the apple into slices that are about half an inch thick, quarter of an inch thick. And you're going to need eight slices. So. You can set the rest of the apple aside and eat it later, but you don't need it for your crab. Next, we're going to arrange these around the crab such that it looks like it has legs. And we're going to take two pieces, and this is where you can use your plastic knife to turn them into crab claws. add the eyes you take your knife and dig a small hole into the top two small holes in the top of your crab whoa this is a little tricky then you can use some chocolate chips or mini chocolate chips to make the eyes it should look something like this For your final snack, we are going to be making ice cream sundaes. For this snack, you're going to need some of your favorite ice cream. We have vanilla ice cream some of, and some of the toppings that you have left over from this week. As you can see, we have some of the things that were in our corp, like these little vanilla goldfish. Um, we have some of the things that we use on day three. We've got the pretzels, the Swedish fish, and the marshmallows. We've got the Oreos from the Muddy Floats and the mini chocolate chips we've been, and the gingerbread men from the Muddy Floats, and the mini chocolate chips that we've been using for several of the other snacks. So then, you put whatever you want on your sundae. So, like, I'm gonna put some Oreos. I like chocolate chips. And a couple of these. I'd like some chocolate chips too. Having ice cream during BBS is a Gethsemane Lutheran tradition, and even though we can't gather together this year, we still wanted to continue it with you. Enjoy! Enjoy. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Um, we had a really great time teaching you how to make all these snacks, and uh, I hope you enjoyed all of the snacks that we made, and we hope that you have a fantastic rest of the summer. See you next year! But I'm just so excited that we had a chance to be together for our virtual vacation Bible school in the great. <laughs> Remember, this Sunday, be there on Zoom in our worship Bye. time. And you can see all of your pictures that Dara's going to put together. Bye, everybody.